Lots of discussion about zero trust, many approaches and descriptions, but the bottom line is that trust itself has become a vulnerability. Mantra is never trust, always verify. And to start, you look at a couple sources of data, like what's allowed to reach that resource, such as the hosts and ports that you're allowed to communicate in. You may also factor in things like metadata about, uh, it's in the form of NetFlow, in terms of the uh, front end and back end connections that could reach an application. What's been missing is all the unknown paths the network can deliver packets. The unknown paths is the trust that's built into the network and it's the risk you've inherited. We want to enumerate all the possible ways a packet can reach a destination. Once we have all those paths, we're in better position to apply security controls to reduce that trust. And most importantly, now that we have all those paths, we have a way of verifying if our controls behave as intended and without undesirable side effects. So let's go ahead and start off by looking at some resources in a subnet. And I just picked 10.101.21.0/24. Locate those in the network here. We found a couple of ARP entries, 10 and 11 interface on this on this particular switch. Let's drill into that and let's take a closer look at that VLAN 251. What does that look like? Okay, a nice little boundary there for us. Something that's pretty far down deep inside the data center. Let's go ahead and highlight that. Highlight that switch. So now what we're going to say is, let's say you know traffic's going to come from anywhere. What are all the ways to this subnet through our switch that traffic can be delivered? There are 76 possible ways. We've, we've highlighted those source points or points in the network that where the traffic come from. We might expect these, but maybe we don't want all of these different paths that are available. But I want you to consider, is that the only way that traffic can make it there? Let's come back here for a second and let's look at one of the resources that's in this. The dot .11 host, for example. And there are some NAT entries that are off of this load balancer. Let's go ahead and expand that. And that load balancer has a destination IP, a VIP, 10, 110, 23. Let's go ahead and take a look at what, what that looks like. Where is that in our topology? Okay, a little bit higher off of this load balancer. And it also has some NAT entries. Let's go ahead and expand those out a little bit. On firewall 02, there's a public IP, the private IP NAT translation. And on firewall 01, the same kind of thing. So we can see that not only is traffic going to come in, it's going to be natted and then load balanced off of that VIP and reach those hosts. We have to account for those paths as well. Let's take a quick look at what those paths could look like. Let's go ahead and highlight this public IP and see how traffic can make it there. So we'll say from anywhere to that IP through our switch and that traffic being delivered. So we have about 15 more ways. Now, when I'm looking at these ways, some of these are path groups, so there's possibilities for equal cost multipath. There's also, I'm not doing this any of this yet on the port itself. But hopefully it gives you some perspective on how difficult the problem can be in order to enumerate all the paths the network can send traffic, including some of the NATs and load balancing that's, that's also there. But now let's go ahead and let's start to apply some security controls. Let's say on this firewall here, this one looks pretty broad. Now any zone to any zone, that might not be what we're looking for there. There's a permit. Let's drill into this device state. So here's those zones. And let's go down to the, to the rule. And it looks like it's a pretty wide open rule. So let's go ahead and edit this in the sandbox. And let's say from a service, let's only allow port 443 or the service HTTPS. And on top of that, let's go ahead and add in a nice big deny. Let me highlight that from my notepad here and bring it on in. So a nice big deny to that subnet. So we'll allow 443, but everything else we don't want to see. Let's go ahead and save that to the sandbox. Now let's look at this load balancer it's doing just destination at perhaps we want it to also manipulate the source IP after traffic has been seen by it and we want it to change the source IP to an interface of its own just to kind of keep things pretty straightforward right now there's only destination NAT so we'll go ahead and we'll see device state here and there's our 
load balancer, this application, and on the source address translation type none. Let's go ahead and edit that in the sandbox. And we can go ahead and put in auto map, which basically says use the source IP of the egress interface. Let's go ahead and save that to the sandbox. Now we've made those changes. We can go ahead and analyze those changes. So what we're doing now is we're just going to play in the sandbox, right? We have this offline digital twin of the network that's had all these possible paths. And we're going to try to apply some security trolls to reduce the trust that's in the network. And we want to know, are we going to break some stuff, right? Is that going to cause undesirable side effects? And also importantly, is it going to help me out? So I'm pulled up here with all these intent checks. These are what I wanted my network to be able to do. And here's an isolation check. Web app should only allow HTTPS. That was back in 2018. Great. That was failing before. Hmm. Well, that's good. Maybe we're finding something. Maybe this journey we're on is going to start to improve some things for us. That's great. When we're failing and now we're passing. But let's make sure we're not going to break anything. So we're going to look at anything I was passing before. Is there anything failing now? Okay. That's a positive sign. Then we come back here and let's go ahead and do some of these uh, searches. So let's go back to this public VIP search. And let's make sure our first step took took into account. Here's our destination NAT, and that's that source NAT. That's changed. Let's double click that and it says egress interface IP. Check. Good. And the firewall looks like it's allowing port 443 through. Okay, good. Check. Those are the, some of the controls I allowed in. But now I want to go ahead and, and let's add in a layer 4 destination port that's not equal to 443. Let's consider all of those ways. Okay, very good, right? So now if you're trying to hit that public VIP, no way, no way you can make it. And let's change this destination IP now to be 10.101.21.0 slash 24. And now we're down to 24 possible ways. That's good, but you see some of these may not, may not be the actual resource themselves because we're trying to hit everything in the subnet. So let's just go ahead and back in and see what the 11 has. All right, so now we're down to even fewer paths. Fewer paths, there's probably some ways of spoofing an IP address over here or other ways you can communicate in that, I, that are bypassing some of those controls. And this is where segmentation could play a role, right? So now we can kind of drill in to this ATL DC01 ACC05 switch. We can drill into that, come into, it, come into its configuration, and we can apply a quick way of doing some segmentation. So on, on it, let me make, let me cut and paste in my access list. So we'll go ahead and we will edit that in the sandbox and we'll go ahead and we'll add an access list here. And we'll just say anything coming now, I want to make sure I come from that source IP of the load balancer for my access list. And I want to apply it on the interface. And okay, there we go. Now we'll go ahead and save that to the sandbox. And now we'll rerun all those checks. So now I've applied a rule on the firewall to kind of limit what gets in and out of all these zones just to 443, blocked all the rest to that subnet, applied a control on my load balancer that can also kind of say what is the source IP that's allowed to make it down to that application and then provided a little bit of segmentation. And over back to these intent checks here, we can quickly scroll through or we can use these filters here. So what is passed before, failed after, nothing, good. We come back to our search and see, let's verify if these things actually worked. So we have here from anywhere to that specific specific host, we had about 13 paths before that, that weren't 443. Let's go ahead and click it. Now we're down to two. Really the only way to make it there now is you are truly segmented. And with that, hopefully you've you have appreciation for being able to go through, go ahead and analyze all the paths through the network, and that our verification checks are still passing, which means you know we're we're not breaking, and we're not having all these undesirable side effects. And you can go on further; you can keep adding controls or whatnot, right? But we've been able to at least enumerate all the ways the network can deliver packets, apply some security controls, and take out a lot of the risk that we have in our network. Thanks.